Hey guys, Ethan here. Today I wanted to do a video covering Virgil or Virgil or whatever you want to call it. Um, it's basically it's 3D acceleration through the Vert IO uh, GPU device with uh, I guess you'd say you'd use it with QEMU. And I kind of want to cover how it works, what you need to use it, and just show it off because it's something that's changed my virtual machine experience. So here is the page for it, which I'll link in the description. But what I wanted to cover on this page was current status. I just wanted to point out that Linux kernel 4.2 and 4.4 are the main versions that you're looking at. So preferably the newer, the better. But 4.4 is where it should actually start working. And that means within the guest from what I'm aware of. So. If the guest OS you're using is Linux 4.4 or greater, it should have support for VirGL. And this is why I call it VirGL, because that's what you'd call it. And as well as VirGL itself, you also want Mesa, and that should be installed on both the host and guest, but I believe it's only the guest that needs it to actually get the 3D aspect. Finally, you want QEMU 2.4 to just get Vert IO GPU, uh, Vert IO GPU, and QEMU 2.5 is where the 3D aspect actually comes in. And then again, VirGL Red uh, Renderer, which I believe is also something that you want on the guest side. So, of course, because we're running Gentoo, I'm going to first show you how to enable this in QEMU. So we're going to go ahead and EIX for QEMU, so I can show you my current flags. And I'll go ahead and make this larger so it's easier to read. And of course, it's not easy to read because there's a lot going on here. So here is QEMU. I'm currently using version 6.0.0. And this is the installed instance of it for me. And you can see right here, these are the use flags. VirGL is enabled, as well as OpenGL. You're going to want both of these at the very least. Both of these, as well as whatever it takes for you to use it normally. So, on top of that, we can take a look at Vert Manager. I guess it wouldn't be Vert Manager, it'd be libvert. And this is just to take a look at it real quick. I also have uh, just standard libvert here, version 7.0.0 dash release candidate 3, or it might just be release 3, it's not an RC, I'm wrong. But these are just the versions of software I'm using. And the final thing I want to cover is, and I'm going to do a NeoFetch for this, you want an AMD graphics card running the open source driver. I have not been able to get this work with NVIDIA or Intel, and I've tested them both. And I've not been able to get Intel to work, though I could have just been doing it wrong. And I have not been able to get NVIDIA to work. So now that we have that all said and done, let's set up the virtual machine. And this is probably the easiest part of the process. So you want your typical VM. In this case, I'm going to be using a Manjaro Cuttlefish, I believe it's called. It's been kind of a little bit since I've used it. This is just a version of Manjaro. It doesn't matter. Nothing's been done to it besides I've installed Mesa uh, utils on it so that I can show off GLX gears. And in video, you want to enable the 3D acceleration checkbox as well as the Vert IO graphics device. And then in Display Spice, you want to click OpenGL and you want to select the graphics card. And in this case, I'm going to select the AMD graphics card that I have in the system right now and press Apply. The listen type must be set to None. So you want this listen type to be on None. And besides that, we're all set. So let's go ahead and start the virtual machine now. And for the sake of it, we're going to scale the display and full screen it. One indicator that it works straight away is a lot of the time the TTY screen, like you saw when it was checking the VDA disk, it flipped upside down for a second as it loaded. That happens exclusively from my experience when it's working. On top of that, the first thing that you'll notice is that I do have a bit of transparency. That is a hint that there is some 3D acceleration going on here. And then when we come time to actually move a window, you'll notice that it's a lot smoother. The animations are at 144 hertz, which is my host refresh rate. 
which is something that you won't see without ver or without 3D acceleration. I'll be showing off what it looks like normally so you can have a comparison. So if we go ahead and close this, let's open up a terminal now and let's take a look at GLX gears. And I'm going to run it with the dash info so I can show you something else. So first things first, you can know the refresh rate is pretty normal. This is typically how it works. But if we go ahead and scroll to the very top of the output, you'll see that the GL renderer is vergl and it's using 3.1 Mesa. So it's OpenGL 3.1, Mesa 21, Mesa on Xorg, that sort of thing. So this is working. You can see everything is pretty smooth. Um, what else can we show off? The 3D animations are great. So minimizing and maximizing feel wonderful. There's really not much you can complain about here. And besides that, everything else works like a typical Vert IO display. So the resolutions that are available are the ones that are typically available with Vert IO. And you can do all of the same things that you could normally with the addition of VirGL and 3D acceleration. And something to note here is that you don't need to install any extra packages for this to work, from my experience. Uh, most standard installs like Arch, Debian, Ubuntu, uh, Manjaro seem to work just fine out of the box. I haven't had to do anything additional to get them to work with 3D acceleration. So now that we've showed that off, uh, let me go ahead and shut down the virtual machine. And it seems like it's kind of, oh, okay. it's. For some reason, this must just be a uh, issue with a DE. I thought that clicking on this up here would bring the drop-down menu, but I guess not. So everything seems to work very well. So at this point, I'm going to shut off the virtual machine, and I'm going to disable the 3D acceleration so I can show you what it looks like in comparison so you have a frame of reference to what a virtual machine typically looks like. Uh, without the 3D acceleration, of course, you probably know what a virtual machine looks like. It looks like a regular computer. So you can see OpenGL has now been unchecked since I disabled 3D acceleration here. And just check it one more time. Yep, now let's hit start. And pay attention to the top of the screen. You might notice that the display, the VDA does not flip upside down. It just disappears as it mode sets. And first thing you'll probably notice is that the animations are a lot choppier and there's more artifacting going on as well as many lines popping up, things just aren't refreshing properly. So if I open up a window, there's no animation. It just appears and disappears. It breaks up quite a bit, and it's very slow. Uh, that being said, we can still do the usual of clicking around in settings, but I guess to point out the reason of the poor performance, like without 3D acceleration, most of desktop environments and many web browsers and programs rely on a compositor and usually you can't turn them off. So in this case, this desktop environment is relying on a compositor. So when you run GLX gears, which I'll do here again, dash info, and I'll make the terminal bigger. When you run GLX gears, you can actually see that the GL renderer is using LLVM pipe which means that really what's going on here is that the CPU is responsible for creating the graphics for the virtual machine. It can't really tap into the dedicated GPU in the system. So the CPU has a lot more to do, and if you've ever used a CPU without integrated graphics, you can imagine that it doesn't do very well replicating 3D graphics. It struggles quite a bit. So the use of VirGL and OpenGL within a virtual machine is that you can effectively gain access to the performance of your graphics card without passing it through. You don't need VFIO, you don't need to change inputs, it'll open up inside of a typical SPICE window and your graphics card will still be available to the host as well as the guest. So with that being said, I hope this video was informative and showed you something new and maybe got you excited for the future of this technology, which I've been really enjoying recently. If you like the video, leave it a like. If you have any questions, leave a comment or join my Discord server and you can ask me. Uh, feel free to subscribe if you want to get notifications of my content. And with that being said, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.